everybody, it's Craig here, and I'm back with a new video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about some really neat, super antique propelling pencils. Some of them are 200 years old. They're really, really cool, and I can't wait to share them with you. All right, you guys, today we are gonna check out my propelling pencils and magic pencils. So what is a magic pencil? Now they're just mechanical pencils. And mechanical pencils, surprisingly enough, have been around since the 18th century. You know, just lead holders in general have been around for a really long time. And the first patent for a lead holder in this case was by Samson Morton back in 1820. My first three pencils in this collection here are propelling pencils. And there's a little ring here. You slide this up and out comes the lead and you unscrew this to replace the lead. The lead for these is really hard to find because it's millimeter or it's just like 1.1 millimeter lead. It's really hard to come by. And on the back here, there is this, you know, for a wax seal or something like that, just some decoration. And I'm gonna leave the links down in the description for David Nishimura at vintagepens.com. He has how to date these. So this one says, S. Morton & Co. Makers and Patentees, which places it around like 1830 very early it's super cool and in the back here you actually unscrew the back of the pencil and there is a holder for more lead so here I have more lead in there which is super neat this one I actually got from Australia here's another one that I got from David Nishimura this one has a bloodstone on the back again just slide this out out comes the lead and this one again has a holder on the back side doesn't hold as much lead or graphite. This one actually just says patentees on it, but it's still from around the same time, same era. And my last one, this one came from eBay, almost like barley corn dot pattern on it. And it's kind of loose. So if you, if you were to push down, it would actually just slide it back, but you can hold it in such a way that you can still write with it and it'll work. Again, this one has a little pink stone on the back. You unscrew this and another lead holder. This one says makers and patentees. Again, same era, 1830s, which is just crazy. Like here's a 200 year old pencil, you know, still works. Those are just called propelling pencils. And then you get into my magic pencils. I just have them kind of going from biggest to smallest. When I bought this one for 140 bucks off of Etsy, I thought I was getting a really small one because the only ones I ever had before were just really tiny ones. But this is a, you know, it's a ring. So you put it on your vest chain, pocket watch chain. And this is from, from the Victorian era or, you know, the 1890s probably and it's this just massive massive pencil it's huge <laughs> the size of this thing but this is a magic pencil so you push the back in and the lead holder retracts and as you pull it out it kind of looks like a weapon they're so satisfying super fun to play with this one is like a barley corn look it's all gold filled it's in great shape giant one and you can find them like on Etsy eBay, not terribly expensive. And this one is made by W.S. Hicks or William Hicks out of New York. If you look up here on the tip, that's the maker right there. This is also from Hicks, but it was made for Tiffany & Co. So Sterling and Tiffany & Co. And this is another one that was meant to go on your vest chain. This is 1901 and HA 1926 and it has a little sheath, so you can actually pull the whole pencil out, or if I didn't polish it up too much, you can also have it in its little sheath, but I over polished it, so it slips right out of its little sheath. Again, this was made by W.S. Hicks for Tiffany & Co, though. And this is from 1926, 1927. My next one is from Perry & Co, and this is out of England. There's this little orange stone in the back. Another really smooth one. And this has no personalization markings or anything like that. But I also have the original box that goes with it. Such a good fidget toy. You have to be careful with these things. This is from, I think, like the 1880s, 1890s. And if that mechanism breaks inside, there's nobody out there that can actually fix these things. So you don't want to mess with them too much. And if you can get lead for them, nice little pencils to jot things down with. This next one came from David Nishimura as well. This is another Tiffany & Co. This was presented to Jay Bredenberg, celebrating 25 years with the Commonwealth Insurance Company of New York. And this is another W.S. Hicks New York pencil. And it's gonna be hard to see there, but Tiffany & Co. 
I love the personalization on there. Next one is 1890s, and this is Aiken Lambert. And Aiken Lambert made nibs for Waterman in the early days. But I love this cable chased design. There's there's some Watermans that are cable chased that I, I just, I've never seen one in person, but I would love to get one at some point. Very smooth. It's a little crooked as it comes out. It's just a little, little wonky, but it works perfectly. This one is made by Fairchild, another barley corn looking one. Got this one off of eBay. Fairchild made nibs for Waterman as well. I don't have any lead for this one, but 60 or 70 bucks, something like that. So probably around the 1890s as well. This is another Hicks, and this is the first one I got, and I got it as a gift from my friend Cedar Bylard. Thank you, Cedar. I love this thing so much. It's so cool. And this one tends to get stuck a lot, so I just have to kind of push it back in to get it back down. The chasing on is really nice. You can see it's it's definitely stuck. I have to kind of push it back in. The earlier Hicks ones had right around the edge of this. It just says Sterling, and then there's a little like acorn symbol. It's really hard to see on here, but that was what made this a Hicks, an early Hicks at least. Very very pretty pencil. And thank you, Cedar, for my first one. Thanks for my new addiction outside of just Waterman's. This one is actually my latest acquisition. It is this really cool looking etched design. It's like a relief design with flowers in it. And it's gonna be hard to see on there, but this one is also Hicks. And it works pretty well. There's a little extra little attachment on here, so it's easy to pull in and take out. And I don't have, I don't have lead for it yet, but cool little piece. Tiny, tiny little piece. Uh, the next ones are pretty much the exact same thing. One's a little bit longer than the other one. And without their little chains or the little rings on top, they're really hard to pull out, but can just, just pull them out. Just, oh man, it's so hard to pull out if you don't have that little. Anyways, this one does pull out. It's just really hard to grab. Same with this one. This one actually, yeah, here we go. Easier to pull out. This one also has lead in it. Sterling silver, man, that hurt. <laughs> it like kind of broke my nail. But really, really cool pieces. I just need to get a chain or something to hook on there and that's easier to take care of. This one's actually Fairchild, I'm wrong. So that one was Hicks, this one is Fairchild. There's a little F on there for Fairchild. You can see they were all making basically very similar designs. They look almost identical, except this one is Hicks and this one is Fairchild. And I'm getting the really teensy tiny ones. I have the original box for this one. This is probably from around 1915 or so. It is WS Hicks. There you go, New York. And this one's super smooth. It's tiny, but it gets to be the super long pencil. It's really nice, the lead and everything in there. But it's so tiny, just so cool. Just listen to it. Now we're getting into the smallest ones. Look how tiny that is. Really cool looking chase pattern on there. This one is unbranded, sterling silver. This one also has lead in it. Look how, look, uh, even fully extended, look how tiny it is. And men or women could have used these. But it's just nice having a little pocket pencil at any time. And my last one, probably the one I paid the most for. I got this from the UK. It's got some enamel and this little green stone in it. It was, you know, meant to be hanging off of your chain. You pull this out and then extend out the pencil. It's got lead in it. It works super tiny, super cool. Really look at it compared to the biggest one. But they do the same job, pencil on a pencil. This thing's just so cool though. Crazy, tiny, adorable, and unbranded. I have no idea where this is from. I mean, I know it's like probably English made. I'll leave some links down below of where you can find some more of these if you guys are interested in them. There's a lot of people that collect them, but they're not as collectible as say, like, you know, fountain pens or anything like that. So you can still find them pretty cheap. This, like, like I said, this one was just really expensive, especially because I bought it out of England and then, you know, I bought it in pounds. So it was pretty pricey. They're just, they're so neat. These things are so cool. So let me know down below, guys, what you think of these, if you're interested in them. I know in the future, I probably want to, I'm thinking about doing a giveaway of one of these in the future. Uh, not one of these. I'm going to, I'll get another one and then I'll do a giveaway, but...
especially with the ones that are like Ake Lambert, Fairchild, they made nibs for Waterman. I kind of can justify it. The only reason I justify the Samson Mortar & Co. pencils is because I have this Waterman letter opener from 1909 and it was made by Mortar & Co. Yeah, that's the only reason why I justified like, well, I have one thing that's Mortar & Co. So if I get more Mortar & Co., it's going to be fine. But, you know, even though this is you know, just a piece of ephemera. Look at that, February 12th, celebrating 25 years of the Waterman's Ideal Fountain Pen brand. This is my honorable mention item. This is a button hook. So it's not a propelling pencil, but it works just the same as a propelling pencil. And this was meant for you hooking your buttons on if you had for ladies who had gloves or, you know, some of your boots or, you know, anything you need to hook in on a button, this is what that would be. But this is made by Aiken Lambert. It's probably from the 1890s and it's just the most satisfying retractable hook. Now, if I try pulling this down and sending it up, it'll actually get stuck. So I have to do it down. It'll open. And then if I close it, you can watch it turn and drop in. It's so satisfying. I love it so much. And I paid like $30 for this thing. So it is not a pencil, but it's just as cool as a pencil, in my opinion. Yeah, there are so many cool things you can find on eBay or, you know, just out there. These cool neato things exist, and I think they're worth sharing with you guys. So thanks so much, you guys. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little different, I know. Uh, this is my first video filming with my new camera. I think it's going pretty good. Wanted to try some new formats, and it's definitely a learning experience. I'm having fun with it, though, and I appreciate all of you guys. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, at Craig Rockanova, and we'll see you guys all very soon. All right. Peace. Is that picture crooked? It's a little better on there. All right. Yeah. <sighs> New hat. Made in the USA, ample creative. All right. Hey everybody, oh wait, I'm not wearing a watch. Let's, uh, let's put a watch on. Okay, 4.07. Hey everybody, it's Craig here.